Good beautiful Sunday, everyone. It's another weekend of learning. My name is Coach Darwin, and I welcome you to the HR Cafe, Trabajo Puente Mapa. We're now at episode 78. Our topic for today is about how to activate LinkedIn's eight touch points to power up your job hunt. So basically, this will be very valuable not only to recruiters, but also to people who are exploring or searching for new opportunities, new job opportunities, or new roles this year. Our guest for today is no other than Ms. Lisel Flippy, and um, she will be joining us at, at the second part of this program. So we welcome you to the HR Cafe, Trabajo Boy Tibapa. As I mentioned, we are an online talk show program. We're being aired weekly, every Sunday at 3 p.m. At here at the Philippines HR Group and also our Philippines HR Group YouTube channel. If you would like to watch previous episodes and previous learning uh, episodes of the HR Cafe, please add us at our FB page, HR Cafe Trabajo Buhay Tibapa. I'm Coach Darwin Rivers, and I'm the founder and president of the Philippines HR Group. We've been doing the uh, this HR Cafe for since the start of the pandemic to ensure that we provide value-adding learning to our HR professionals and people leaders, but not only that, to all Filipinos in general. I'm a certified life coach, public speaker, motivational speaker, and HR consultant. We are joined by our fellow HR Cafe servers, uh, we have mentor John Ber Bernard Ordonez Kaasi, who's a learning and development practitioner and educator. He's also best known for unboxing Catholicism podcast and FB Light, and he's also a financial and wellness coach. We also have mentor Rona Florentino, Montal mentors Rondel Florentino, as one of our HR Cafe servers. Mentor Rona has more than 20 years of HR practitioners' experience working both in local and international companies. She's the president and CEO of Uprush Social Geekers. She's also a public speaker and HR consultant. Unfortunately, for this episode, we won't have um, co co um mentors Rona and mentor Burns but of course I have my constant mentors Tina Koang. Mentor Tina is an operations and HR leader with broad local and overseas experience. She's a general manager and HR leader of a retail company and best known for online content Tina and Manila.com. Hi mentor Tina! Magandang hapon, Coach Darwin. It's always a pleasure to be part of the weekly HR Cafe. Today is already on, we're already on the February month of February. Oh nga, mabilis bilis ng panahon. And we also have here in our show our guest speaker, Ms. Lizelle Flippy, who will be part of our discussion, and Sir Alan Cañete. So marami tayong mga ano, uh, guest experts who will be co-hosting with us. And for everyone who is watching, please feel free to leave your name, company name, location, so we can tag you on this show. Right now, we have Jane Policarpio who is greeting everyone sa PHRG. So if there's anybody else who's watching please feel free to leave your name so we can give you a shout out coach darwin sure as i mentioned we also have uh, mentors alan uh, alan kanyate who will be joining us mentor alan is a hrod practitioner and also a board member of the philippines hr group Ment mentors alan kumusta Mabuting mabuti and uh, good afternoon to everyone and for those who are in other uh, time zone, magandang umaga at magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Those who are watching now in their mobiles, alam ko iba sa inyo nasa siguro nagbabiyahe pa, no? Ingat-ingat lang dyan, magandang hapon and uh, stay with us because you will be learning a lot today. Correct. And aside from the live audience that we have right now, we also would like to give a shout out to all team replays. Alam nyo ba, yung mga previous episodes natin, in just a week, gathered more than 10,000 views. So maraming maraming salamat po sa mga team replays at sa inyong lahat na patuloy na nakitiwala sa amin dito sa HR Cafe at sa Philippines HR Group. Now, we can start our program. Um, we welcome you to 
the HR Cafe. What we do here is we provide timely news and updates. We impart knowledge and experience that are value-adding and beneficial to our audience. We discuss problems, issues, and challenges, and provide answers and resolutions through our guest speakers. We also discuss new technology, tools, and processes, as well as industry's best practice. At kung meron kayo mga job openings sa mga company ninyo, lalong lalo na kung HR-related ito, please um, message us at the comment section and we'll be happy to announce it here at our program because we are a virtual job board and we, we uh, would like to ensure that those jobs are, are, be, are known to the general public. We connect employers and applicants here at the, at the HR Cafe. Also, at the end of the day, we would like to bridge understanding between employers and employees and provide inspiration and motivation to everyone. So join us in another episode of the HR Cafe. We're now episode 78. As we start our program, alam nyo na to, we've been doing this since the start of the pandemic, since 2020, almost two years now. We start our program with an inspiring quote. And for this episode, our quote comes from Gore Vidal, who's the author of the book, Julian. According to Gore Vidal, heroes must see their own fame. No one else will. Let me repeat that. Heroes must see to their own fame. No one else will. To all our audiences, please, um, share to us how does this particular quote for the week or wow quote for the week resonates to you? What does this quote mean to you? Okay, so let's start with Mentor Tina. Mentor Tina, how does this quote mean to you as an HR practitioner, as a leader, and also, of course, as a mother of your beautiful children and head of the family? Okay, nobody wants an arrogant hero. Lalo na sa Pilipinas. Sa atin kasi, we, we celebrate successes. Pero ang importante sa atin, sa mga kapwa nating kababayan, bawal magyabang. Arrogance and it's not really a welcome thing here. Going back to HR, a lot of HR are supposed to be humble. Di ba kasi minsan, tatrabaho ka, tapos parang mali lang siguro yung tone. Kasi, syempre, ang dami mo nang ginagawa sa araw na yun. Tapos, kinukulit ka pa. Tapos, hindi ka, yung kinukulit nila sa'yo, hindi nila binasa dun sa rules and regulations. Paulit-ulit mo nang inuorient na sasabi. Yun pa rin ang tinatanong. And sometimes talaga, it's very easy for an HR to snap. Eh, pero pag nagsasnap ka kasi, parang sabi ng tao, bawal ka daw mag-snap. Bawal daw ang HR magalit. Kasi daw... Di ba bang, ano ba yan? Ang ginagawa mo naman, nakala mo sino ka. You know, what our employees say about HRs. Parang it seems as if parang HRs cannot put themselves out there. They must always be in the back, serving other people, being the support center. But I'd like to change that mindset a bit and say that actually HRs are our heroes. Okay? You can be a hero in your organization, but you have to my, take it in mind na to be a hero, hindi yung pa-secret-secret lang palagi. Kasi marami tayong mga kasama na gagawa, magsasakripisyo, masipag, pero ayaw nilang ilabas yung you know, achievements nila kasi takot sila na people will accuse them of being mayabang. My suggestion to our fellow HRs, do not be too afraid. If you are doing a good job, show it. Do not be too, alam mo yung pahambol effect na parang hindi, hindi ako yan. You know, if it's really something that you worked hard for, you have to also show your face kasi you can be a secret hero in your organization. But at the end of the day, if you want to last in the organization, please give the HR community a credit na parang kung magaling ka, pakitaan mo rin yung mukha mo sa kapwa mong tao. Hindi to pagiging pabida, because that's different, di ba? Ang pabida kasi is wala kang ginagawa, pero gusto mo mag-take ng credit. What I am saying is if you are accomplished, if you did good work, please feel free to take the credit pa rin. Because as you said nga, heroes must see to their own fame. 
Because otherwise, kung ayaw mong ipakita yung kagalingan mo, later on, merong magiging Apple dyan na magtitake ng credit para sa'yo. Tapos magtatampo ka lang. And then you will say, bakit na naman other people are taking credit for my own success? Once again, heroes must see to their own fame. If you deserve it, take credit for it. And people and all of us in the HR community will be happy for it. Do we'll not be cheering for you. Oh, we'll be cheering for you. Diba? Iba ang yabang na walang K sa magaling ka. And then you show people, sino yung gumawa talaga ng effort na yun. Because at the end of the day, if you don't show yourself because you're afraid of what other people will say, you are doing a discredit to yourself and to others and the HR community. Let's move on to Ma'am Lisel. Any thoughts? Muted. Oh, there. Hello. Ang ganda. Ang ganda nung, um, nung explanation mo, Mentor Tina. Kasi yun din yung, yung reason why we're here, right? Um, we have a lot of stories to tell. Hindi tayo, natatako tayo minsan kasi we start from zero if we go to another industry or for instance, may, life happens, right? And we really have to start with a different uh, different position or different company. But actually, we start from experience. You know, we have to find that inner signature story of ours, yung inner hero of ours. And sometimes it takes other people to tell us. But if we want to be proactive diba, with our own growth, then we find our own hero. And, try, and kahit nasabihin natin, mm, konti lang to, yung maliit lang namang bagay to. But nakakatuwa, um, what happens is, if someone else tells you, you know what, you've been really great because you helped me get through this particular journey, um, hindi mo alam na yung palang ginawa mo is already worth a lot to other people. You're touching and lives of others, yes, diba? Yes, correct. Yun. How Sir about Alan? you, Mr. Alan? Para sa akin, ano eh, um, first, I would like to define what is a hero. A hero for me is a, an ordinary a person, tulad natin lahat, no, mga taga-HR, ordinary people who make themselves extraordinary. And how can you make yourself extraordinary? Simply say yes to any challenge, any adventure. Kasi if, if someone like like us, ordinary people, um, accept the challenge and na-conquer na -conquer po natin yung challenge na yun, then we can make things better for other people. Doon ka magiging hero. And sabi nga ni Ma'am Tina, huwag kang mayabang. Yung self-confidence mo should also be always in check dahil baka naging arrogant ka na, no? That's excessive uh, feelings of delusions of grandeur na siguro yun, no? And we don't uh, we don't actually accept that kind of uh, attitude. So, huwag naman sobr sobrang um, humble. False humility naman yun. It's simple lang eh. Kung meron challenge na binibigay sa atin yung mga boss natin, huwag mong hindihan. Accept it. Lalo na kung talagang challenging. Dahil the moment na na-conquer mo yun, you will be seen by your colleagues and your boss as hero. Yun lang po. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Mentor Alan. Mentor Tina, baka may mga sinishare ang ating mga audiences and listeners right now before I go we to have, my... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have people who are greeting us. Emmy Aglia Manuel and Bong Tuplano says, Happy Sunday to everyone. Mona San Diego is saying hi from Sa uh, Davao City. Mark Christian Palisok, good afternoon. Limer is also... Talk, uh, greeting us from Davao, Rachel, Giselle, Lorraine, Mirna Desena is from Caritas at Labora Human Resource Service Cooperatives. Hello po. And good afternoon, seasoned HR. There is also another comment that says, it is something that you worked hard for. You deserve to let people know that. What's the point of fulfilling your goal and achievement if you are not proud of yourself? Just because you show to people that how you shine does not mean you are boasting. Coach Darwin, your thoughts? Well, let me tackle this particular wow quote for the week uh, in, into two separate things. First is, it's February, and most of the companies right now are doing their annual performance evaluation. And you know what? What, what I've seen throughout the years, when whenever um, I have discussions with my team members or my direct reports, normally, they fail on one thing. They fail on 
putting forward the achievements that they've done in the last 12 months. Mm-hmm. They failed to actually, I know, to to showcase ano ba yung mga ano nila, yung mga milestones nila. And I would like to remind everyone, not only HR practitioners, but those who are working, whenever you're doing your annual performance review, di ba may self-assessment yon. it's your opportunity to really indicate, define, put everything there, kung ano na yung mga nagawa ninyo. Kasi kung hindi nyo to, i- kung hindi nyo to sasabihin, ilalagay to sa evaluation nyo, your leaders don't might not be able to appreciate it or might not know it and they won't be able to give you the score or the evaluation that dapat sana ay makuha ninyo. So basically, in everything that you do, please ensure that your leaders um, are aware of it. Hindi naman lagi, pero always remember this, ha? ako kasi meron akong motto, the fruits of your labor will define who you are. Diba? So kung ano yung ginagawa mo araw-araw, kung ano yung ginagawa mo, ina-achieve mo, hindi mo na, uh, minsan hindi mo rin kailangan ipagmalaki yan kasi ang mga tao na mismo ang makakapansin. Pero understand that there's also a philosophy na dapat ano, um, we also try to brand ourselves. Kasi ano, in relation to, sa, sa topic natin later on, ang branding, branding in HR should also be done because Branding would put confidence to your stakeholders on what you are capable of. Ulitin ko lang ha, if you're properly branding yourself, it will put confidence in your stakeholders and also on the people that with the people that you work with on what you're capable of. If hindi mo sinasabi yung mga bagay na nagawa mo na at yung mga bagay na na-achieve mo na at hindi nila malalaman ito, hindi nila ma, kumbaga, yung yung confidence nila sa 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 pagpwede mong gawin at sa mga dagwa mo na hindi nila ma-appreciate. Um, another thing is with regards to um, your personal uh, sa, sa personal life, di ba? Minsan we tend to be ano, we tend to sabi nga ni ano, sabi nga ni mentor Alan kanina, ano, false ano, false uh, parang humility. false tie sa pagiging humble, di ba? Oh. Uh, ano ba yung word na ginamit mo Alan? False humility. False humility. O minsan kasi, di ba, parang ayaw nating, ipa, ayaw, ayaw na, nahihiya tayo ipagmalaki yung mga bagay na nagagawa natin. Pero sa totoo lang, gusto talaga natin, ano, gusto talaga natin uh, malaman ng mga tao kung ano yung kakayaan natin. One thing that you could do is, without being boastful, is just to provide updates to everyone of what you are interested in, what are the milestones in your life, what are the things that you're very passionate of. And believe me, people who would have the same uh, mindset, people who share the same passion would gravitate to you. Okay? Mm-hmm. So that's my thoughts for this well quote for the week. Baka may mga humahabot siyang mentor tila. Baka mayroong mga nagbigay na kanilang thoughts about our uh, wow, thought, wow quote for the week. There's a lot of people who are just saying hi. There is actually Sheila Marie Aguda from Manila. She is working for V Roque Corp. Uh, Mabel De Chavez is from Cubao, Quezon City, and is from the Mola Molaer Law Offices. She's here for the first time. Greetings and appreciate, embrace, and acknowledge our greatness. Okay, before we continue, ano lang nga, gusto ko lang i-shout out yung ating mga senior mentors sa PHRG. Sir June Aspasio is watching, Sir Ernesto Espinosa is watching, oh. uh, our friend Paul Herrera is also watching. Maraming maraming salamat po sa patuloy niyong pagsuporta sa HR Cafe, of course sa Philippines HR Group. Mga big Now, let's yan. go to HR question for the week. Nako, alam mo ba? Kasi nga, ano, Q1 is also ano eh, uh, a time of resignation and a time of hiring in a lot of companies. May nagtatanong lagi sa atin, is education or educational background still relevant in hiring talents in this highly competitive market? What are your thoughts about this, mentors? Alan, Mentor, go first. Alan first, diba? Alan. Mm. <laughs> Alan first? Sige, yes. Alan, ikaw muna daw, sabi ni Mentor Tina. Ang tingin ko, it's still very relevant. Kasi, how can you how can you practice the profession if you don't have educational background? Halimbawa, you're, 
you're pursuing a career on yan, huwag tayong lalayo, HR. At ang yung tinapos ay, let's say, high school graduate or siguro undergraduate ka ng college, there are a lot of competencies that can be learned if you finish your education na magiging confident ka in facing people who are also graduates. And you will be facing people inside the company who are also graduates na, na, na for sure, hindi natin masabing uh, equally, there, there are many people out there who will look down on you kapag hindi ka graduate. Ang hirap nun kapag, and that will affect your self-esteem. And um, marami pa rin benefits kapag graduate ka ng college because there are so many subjects that you can still apply, you will be able to apply pagdating mo sa iyong uh, pitinatahak na career, whatever profession is that. So, well, hindi naman ibig sabihin ng professional, kailangan graduate ka. There are, so, there are also professionals who are not graduate. But when it comes to a specific career, importante po yung educational background. So, alam naman natin that, that it's one of the minimum requirements ng any job description of any critical positions sa isang organization. So, mas mataas ang batting, ang battling average mo na mapili if you have educational back, background like um yun, yung educational attainment mo in, in, which is very relevant to what you're trying to pursue. Yun lang po akin tingin diyan. Lucelle, your thoughts? Um I think I'd like to um, share my thoughts as a executive uh, resume writer. Okay. So there that's true sabi ni mentor Alan. There are particular jobs that when you look at the job advertisement they really specify right like they prefer or they, you must have this particular degrees or diplomas. Um I think uh, we just have to widen our, our 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 mindset in terms of what education background is. Diba? Meron kasing um, traditional or formal education, but yung mga ano, 17, 16 years old ngayon, dahil medyo natenga yung kanilang um, uh, pag-face-to-face um, education, actually they are very aggressive in looking at other um, online um, form of um, of education and schools are giving that out. So I guess um, looking at what what is during our time? Yes, hindi ko alam kung ilang taon yung mga nandito nakikinig, ano? <laughs> Pagkasing edad ko. Plus, adding also the different types of education that is um, that is here and now. But as long as it's verified, ha? Hindi yung ano lang. <laughs> okay. So, do, all of those are relevant. Uh, and especially depending don sa, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, yung ina-applyan mo na trabaho. So, that's that's what I see. Okay, for me, I will share my context. A, a lot of the employees that I hire I, are high school graduates. Okay, B, I actually have a uh, excessive educational background because I have an MBA, I have certification. So kulang ko na lang post ano post doctor tal doctorate degree. Oh, yun na lang ang kulang ko. Pinag-iisipan ko pa eh. So, what I can say this is from that situation. And having all these, having an extensive educational background more than average, I can really confidently say, kasi nakikita ko sa mga classmates ko eh, I do not think that my classmates in my MBA class are anywhere smarter than many of the college graduates or even the high school graduates that I've met along the way. However, what they do have is a lot of time to pursue that educational background because an MBA costs millions, like one to two million over an 18th month to 24 month period and a lot of resources to pursue such backgrounds. In the Philippines, sometimes people do not have that luxury because they are breadwinners. So when they stop working to start studying, may not, there is an opportunity cost. Parang there is a time that they cannot su financially support their family, which is a problem, especially when you start your family young. 
when you have kids at the age of 21 to 26, it's really hard for you to study even more. Kasi every single, lalo na pag kunyari, the kids, kailangan ng gatas, ng pampers, tapos hindi lang kids mo. May kapatid ka pa, may nanay ka pa. You know, life really happens. So I really do not fault people for not having the educational background. I do notice though that those who are who have the educational background are more mayabang. <laughs> Fact. Kasi they feel that they have more advantages than somebody who do not have kunyari, high school or grade school graduate uh, degree lang. My conclusion that I will share to you is actually the educational background not only teaches you the knowledge which you can learn elsewhere through certifications, through work experience. Ang pinakamalaking advantage for me ng educational background is confidence. Because when you are when you have the college degree, when you have the master's degree, after you finish that, ang hirap magyabang against you. For example, meron kang colleague na kinakalaban sa, sa, sa work. Oh, mas magaling ako sa'yo kasi may master's ako. Eh, ikaw naman, ako din meron eh. O, oh, di ba? Hindi pareho kayong labanan. So, ang hirap, there's, there's a lot of confidence in terms of projecting your, yourself on how brilliant you are if you have the educational background. Reality is though, I actually do not think that those who have master's degree or doctorate degree are anywhere smarter in general. Because we do know a lot of our kababayans do not have master's or doctorate degree. Pero, mas magaling sila pagdating sa diskarte at pagiging pasaway at pagiging pasikot-sikot. Many people here can become millionaires even though they do not have the master's and post-doctorate degrees. A lot of people criticize that those with extensive educational background ay okay lang. Kasi wala namang kayong experience. Kasi aral lang kayo ng aral. True. For me, the best experience, sa akin ha, the educational background will get your feet inside the door, will get you hired on your first and second jobs. But later on, as you pursue your career, especially when you're working for decades, the first page do not contain the educational background. It always contains your career or your work experience. That's the most important thing. And yet, many people do not manage their work experience well. They still jump from one company to the other within a four to five month period. They they resign improperly. I, I mean, I'm saying it's not always what is your educational background or what your work experience, but also your professionalism because it shows in your resume. So for me, is it relevant? It's very relevant. So long as, kasi from a confidence perspective, it gives you more confidence. But if you have the confidence, kahit na wala kayo masyado educational background, so long as you get your first job, Second job and do it properly. Malalaman mo, actually, the educational background don't really matter as much, especially if you are magaling. And Filipinos are very magaling and madiskarte. Kahit ako, natatalo pa rin ng mga high school graduates kasi napakatalino talaga nila, lalo na sa kalokohan. Coach Darwin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Mentor Tina, Mentor Alan, and um, uh, to our special guest for 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 today. No, um, ako, ano, uh, I would say that I would try to 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 define what most people would say about educational background. Educational background is not the school where you came from. Kasi if it's school that you came from, for me, it's never relevant kung anong school ka nang galing. If, if you define it as your your uh, your course in college, I would say that um, course your course that you took up in college would help you have the theoretical expertise or the, the theoretical knowledge to be hired for a role. But it, it does not guarantee, sabi nga ni Mentor Tina, it does not guarantee for you to be successful in that role. Um, educational background in terms of your pursuit in excellence. Kasi we all know that education doesn't stop 
when you finish high school or when you finish college or you finish your MBA or doctorate. Believe me, no one is a no one has the monopoly of knowledge. So everything that we do, every experience that we take, we earn learnings and knowledge on it. So and life is a constant learning, de ba? So for me, educational background would mean ano yung um, passion mo to pursue knowledge. But also understand that employers have the, you know, the have what you call this, their prerogative to set the minimum requirements. And a lot of roles, especially in mid-management to upper management, would require a uh, college education. And what I would say to to those of you who are who doesn't have any college education, how for me there are a lot of options. You have you have um, you have online courses. You have certification programs. You have this that learning programs that you can avail to. And there are a lot of uh, workshops and trainings that you can attend to to be at par with those people that have theoretical knowledge on on a certain subject or topic. So just continue to be passionate in learning and your passion in learning will bring you to success. That's it for me. Me, that's a good one. Yes, Alan. Kasi na-realize ko lang na kapag corporate setting or corporate career ang gusto mong tahakin, um, most uh, jobs, especially the, the white-collar jobs, would really require a higher educational background. Kung blue-collar, hindi masyado eh. However, if you're really good at hindi ka graduate ng any course or high school graduate ka lang, no? at wala kang planong mag-pursue ng career in corporate setting, Pero gusto mo maging milyonaryo. Maraming nagiging milyonaryo na hindi graduate ng end course. Dahil sabi nga naman Tina, magaling. Kaya para sa akin, parang ang conclusion mo dyan, kung gusto mo maging milyonaryo at wala kang balak mag-aral, posible. It's all up to your grit, determination. Pero dapat meron, meron kang skill and meron kang basic knowledge kung ano man yan. Yung passion. Pero kung gusto mo ng career sa corporate life, sa corporate world, Dapat mataas ang educational attainment mo kung gusto mo umangat ng umangat sa career ladder. Yun yung aking realization. Thank okay, you. thank you for that, Mentor Allen. So let's let's continue our, ano, our updates at the HR Cafe. And we have a lot of important updates for our audience before we go to the second part of the free training program. So our first update is coming from the Department of Labor and Employment. You know what? In the past two years, a lot of companies are are, are uh, having issues of employee of bringing back employees back to work, and not only employees, but also convincing their clients to support their businesses. And one of the things that uh, Dole and a lot of LGUs is doing is that they have this program called Safety Seal. At uh, marami sa mga establishment kayon na sumusunod sa minimum public health standards ang binibigyan ng safety seal ng ating government. Pag may safety seal ka kasi, ibig sabihin nito, sinesertify ng government or ng DOLE na yung establishment mo, yung business mo ay safe or ligtas kasi sumusunod kayo sa minimum health requirement. And to know more about the application for the safety seal, let me just uh, share this video. Ang safe naman o yung certified na safe. Ang safety seal ay patunay na certified safe ang iyong business dahil nasusunod ang minimum public health standards. At meron din itong QR code para magpadali ang contact tracing. Ito ay tibla lang. Pero kailangan i-renew every 6 months or every year kung nasa tourism sector ang iyong business. Kung meron ka ng mga documents na ito, pwede ka na mag-apply para sa safety seal certification. May iba-ibang office para sa iba't ibang klase ng mga negosyo. Pag 
na determine nyo na ang issuing authority. Simple lang ang steps para makuha ang safety seal. Pumunta sa office ng issuing authority o sa kanilang website. Kumuha ng safety seal checklist at magsagawa ng self-assessment para sa iyong business. Isubmit ang checklist at abangan ang inspection schedule. Pag na-approve ang application, ibigyan kayo ng safety seal sticker. Pag hindi naman na-approve, sasabihin ko anong health standard ang hindi nasunod at bibigyan kayo ng pagkakataong ayusin ito. Pag nakuha na ang safety seal, ipaskin ito sa may entrance para makita agad ng mga customer. Pwede nyo rin ipagmalaki na certified safe kayo sa inyong mga social media pages. Paalala labang, ang isang safety seal ay para sa isang branch lang. Siguraduhin bawat branch mo is certified safe. Siguraduhin din na nasusunod palagi ang minimum public health standards dahil baka mabawi ang iyong certification. Maaaring mag-operate kahit na walang safety seal. Pero hindi ba mas mahalagang kampanya ang mga customer sa loob ng iyong negosyo? Kaya kumuha na ng safety seal para ingat ang at tayong lahat. Okay, so pinapaalala po namin sa lahat ng mga HR practitioners, people leaders, employers, and business owners. Um, ang ating gobyerno, ang mga LGUs, ay merong programa regarding safety seal at uh, makipag-ugnayan lamang po kayo sa dolly.gov.ph or sa inyong local government para sa safety seal application and certification ng inyong establishment or businesses. Now, for our for advisories and updates for our SSS, our Philippine Social Security System, let's go to Mentor Tina. Mentor Tina, ano nga bang latest or updates from SSS? Oh, I'd like to remind everyone that you have seven days up until Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2022, to get your loan sa SSS Condone. Ang tanong ng tao, ano yun? Pwede ba silang mag-apply ng salary or calamity loan? No, this is not applying for a new loan. This is if, for example, dati po nakapag-apply kayo ng SSS salary and calamity loan and for some reason, hindi kayo nakabayad and because hindi kayo nagbabayad, SSS has charged you a lot of penalty Kasi it's 1% per month pag hindi kayo nagbayad. So ngayon, may paraan na kayo para matanggal yung penalty na charge siyo ng SSS. Okay? Hindi to panibagong loan. It is to pay for your existing loan that has been there for many years and has been incurring a lot of penalties. Ngayon, pwede ninyong matanggal ang penalty by applying for the SSS Loan Condonation Program which ends in February 14. Simple lang po yun. Number one, you have to log on to your SSS online portal. If you do not have access, please do not panic but you need to go to the branch to reset it. It must be done online. Then, after you have access to your online account, all you have to do is apply for the loan condonation. Pay for the condon for the amount that you have owed for principal. For example, ano yung babayaran mo? Kunyari, 20,000 yung uh, niloan mo. 10,000 yung penalty. Okay? 10,000 yung interest. So, ang kasama lang na babayaran mo is yung principal plus yung interest. So, it's 30,000 pesos. You can pay either full, pr full price at one-time payment of 30 or installment na 50% na 15,000 lang. When this happens, then you can get your your penalty waived. It must be done by February 14. The approval of your loan condonation uh, application must be done by February 14 and you must pay one-time payment lang po in any of the SSS accredited payment gateways sa banko, sa bayad center. Madali lang po siya. But please only avail of it if you're going to pay. Kasi if you're not gonna pay, mag-apply kayo ng condonation, wala ring matatanggal na penalties. Nasayang lang po ninyo yung bala na to. So February 14, log on to your SSS online portal to avail of 
the loan condonation program once every few years lang to usually pagdating ng election so please take advantage of this opportunity next Mentor Tina, siguro i-highlight lang natin no, kung bakit mm. importante na mabayaran ng mga employees yung mga loans nila. Kasi sinasabi nga natin, di ba, pag nag-retire kayo at kailangan nyo nang mag-avail ng SSS benefits ninyo, yung Correct. inutang nyo sa SSS na every month nag i ng ng uh, interest, nag incur ng penalty, baka mamaya wala na kayong makuhang SSS uh, benefits upon retirement kasi kakainin na to nung, ano, nung loans na hindi nyo nabayaran. Hindi ba? Opo. Tapos ang pangit pa dito, okay, kunyari, nalaman po ng management inyo na meron kayong outstanding loan from SSS. Management can actually deduct the outstanding loans from your final pay without asking for your permission because it is mandated by the SSS for the company to do. So for example, may loan pa kayo ng 30,000 pesos, hindi kayo hindi niyo na asikaso to, paalis na kayo. All of your final pay can be play, can be used to pay for that and you can do nothing about it. So there's many things. Tapos pagdating dun sa panibago mong kumpanya, yung natitira babayaran mo pa rin. Eh, why would you pay for the penalty? Kasi malaki talaga yun, lalo na pag matagal ka nang hindi nagbabayad. So, if you can take advantage of this opportunity, please do so. Next. We also have good news. Apparently, the SSS says na kung pwede ka magbayad ng government fees the safer and most rewarding way. You can get a 10% cashback on your first ever SSS pag-ibig DTI or PRC fee when you pay with your PayMaya registered mobile number. So that's pretty big savings. You can also get a 5% cashback on your recurring transactions for every month of the promo. So pag wala kayong PayMaya account, you may register, upgrade, and use the code Bills Bayad when creating your PayMaya account and get a 100 peso voucher so every peso counts next so with the growing lowering of covid 19 alert status to level 2 in the ncr and in line with the various ietf resolutions please be informed that bumabalik na po natin ang service hours na sss from 8 to 5 mondays to fridays pero we have to still follow the number coding system you know yung 0 to 1 is monday 2 to 3 is tuesday and so on and so forth so please remember what the last digit of your sss number is because that is para siyang color coding ng kotse so, pwedeng pumunta sa SSS, pumunta na po kayo, lalo na pag meron kayong loan, para makapag-apply na kayo for loan condonation before next week. Next. SSS also reminds everyone that the online portal has many uses. You can apply for a salary, calamity, or multi-purpose loans. You can check your loans and contributions, payments, and then you can do so. You can also like uh, submit your benefit notification forms for fast approval. For me, this is a uh, this is a portal worth knowing for and every employee should know their username and password if you do not have it yet please go to the branch on your designated day para makakuha na kayo ng username and password ninyo so you can have access to your online portal next onward alan mute po mute po sir alan Pag-ibig fund, may magandang balita. Uh, sila po ay inaanunsyo ang kanilang milestone because they financed 22,028 socialized homes in 2021, which is up to 30%. Now, kung ikukumpara po ito nung mga naunang taon, nung uh, yung kanila pong increase ay... Uh, 9.71 billion or 37% increase kapag kinumpir sa 2020 milestone nila. But last year, ang nangyari nga ay um, may, may 22,028 homes na kanilang uh, kanilang uh, na-construct. So the number Marami of... Marami so, ng bahay pa lang ngayon, Alan. Oh, no? Using oh, pag-ibig fund. Napaka-affordable. The number of socialized homes financed by Pagibig Fund increased 30% to this 
yung nabanggit kong figures compared to 16,975 socialized units na funded nila noong 2020. The amount of socialized housing loans, meanwhile, surged up to 37% or 9.71 billion. Ang galing, no? So, meaning, yung mga kasamahan po natin dyan na nakikinig at nanonood, kung meron po kayong balak, ay gawin nyo na habang marami pang pagkakataon at uh, open-open po ang pag-ibig sa pagtulong sa inyo. At, uh, we, we here at uh, HR Cafe, the Philippines HR Group, have, has always been an advocate of the pag-ibig housing loans. Eh, no? Diba, Mentor mm -hmm. Tina, sinasabi natin na, ano, na kung mag apply kayo ng loan para sa bahay, sa pag-ibig kayo mag-apply. Kasi ang pag-ibig, hindi man kayo makabayad or mahuli kayo ng bayad, hindi nila i-elite ang bahay na tinitira ninyo unlike sa mga banks na pag sa bank hindi ka pagbayad the following month bukod sa mga interest ay pwede kang mawala ng bahay sayang lahat yung uh, hinulog mo mm -hmm. sa, so, sa pag-ibig sa pag-ibig housing may bahay ka na may pag-ibig ka pa <laughs> kayong bento next matter Alan and, yun ang STI naman ay merong magandang balita STI is uh, um, giving away scholarship grants no? up to 20% on tuition fees. You can enjoy a 20% scholarship grant on tuition fee for incoming grade 11 freshmen and transferees for school year 2021 and 2022. At uh, ito po ay exclusive for Pag-ibig Loyalty Plus card holder and Pag-ibig Loyalty card holders. At uh, kung gusto niyo pong uh, makontak ang SDI for more information, you go to their website www.sti.edu. So you can gain more discounts, more rewards, meron din sa iba pang iba pa nilang partners. Kaya always take your pag-ibig loyalty card or loyalty card plus wherever you got, wherever you got or you go and see the list of discounts from their partners by clicking their portal. Alan for PhilHealth, anong balita? Ay, ito maganda to. Kasi, alam mo, dahil sa stress, ang mga tao, kung ano-anong sakit ang tumutubo. Kung meron pong hyperthyroidism goiter, ang PhilHealth ay nagmimigay ng benepisyo or nagbibigay ng benepisyo ang Dapat mong malaman at ma-avail ma ma kung ikaw ay meron nito na up to 8,500 sagot ng PhilHealth kapag meron kang hyperthyroidism goiter. Okay, so yung pong meron mga mag-anak, magulang o baka kayo mismo dahil sa sobrang uh, stress o, at kung ano pa mga, mga causes dyan, eh, malamang malaki na yung inyong, ano, no, yung inyong uh, uh, leg. Yung minsan sabi nila, Darwin, kapag kulang ka raw sa iodine, at ang, yun ang isa sa mga major causes. No? So, um, kung talagang ito'y lumaki na at kailangan nyo magpa-opera, ay Which kailangan siya. Mahal, mahal niya, mahal niya. Oh, mahal na gastusin niya. At least, feeling out, is supporting us. Kailangan mo dyan. Um, ang brother ko, way back three years ago, uh, nag, nagpa-opera na ng kanyang goiter. At uh, mahal talaga. At mabuti na lang ay uh, okay naman siya. Uh, okay na siya ngayon. At maswerte yung mga inabutan nitong um, benefit package na to ng PhilHealth. Okay, so let's go to our sponsors. Um, we would like to uh, encourage everyone to please visit the FB page of El Puerto Marina Beach Resort and Vacation Club. They have resorts in Pangasinan, in Boracay, and also in Palawan. Uh, we are a partner of El Puerto Marina Business Certification Club. They're one of our sponsors at the Philippines HR Group in HR Cafe, Usapang Buet, di ba pa? Just uh, add them in Facebook, message them, reach out to them, and inform them that you are a member of the Philippines HR Group or the HR Cafe Usapang Trabaho, di ba pa? And they will give you special rates and discounts. Also, um, we are happy to announce that we have renewed our partnership with People Matters for the year 2022. At one of the big events of People Matters 
is that they have a People Matters Futurist Forum. This would be on March 10, 2022. This is for the whole Southeast Asia. It's an online forum of CEOs and global leaders and HR heads. Uh, the topic is thinking out of the box, thinking bold, and thinking 10 times. Look at your existing business models and the process from a radical different perspective. Please watch out for more announcement because the Philippines HR Group is not only a community partner, but we will be giving away special discounts and freebies related to the Futurist Forum of People Matters. Also, if your company is looking for an HRS management system that is cloud-based, please reach out to PeopleForce, PeopleForce uh, in Facebook, or PeopleForce uh, HRD, and uh, inform them that you're a member of the Philippines HR Group, and you are entitled to a 14-day free trial. PeopleForce has HRS management system, which is cloud-based, that would help you in your recruitment, engagement, HRIS, timekeeping, and also performance management. Also, uh, Sir Alan would like to give out a special announcement for all of our viewers for this episode. Sir Alan, can you tell me more about, uh, can you tell us more about the Creative Smooth Scholarship for this program? Alan? Thank you, Darwin. Uh, yung, ang Creative Moves po, Creative Moves Virtual Academy at Creative Moves Business Outsourcing, yung po yung aking uh, humble uh, training outfit, we are giving away scholarship for the lucky winners of this episode. Ang gagawin lang po ninyo, makinig kayong maigi and uh, listen to those key points that will be raised by our our uh, our guest speakers, si Ma'am Lizelle. Because I will shoot a very, very, uh, uh, what do you call that? Interesting question. Ang makasagot po nito ay uh, isulat lang sa aming, uh, aming portal because ang tamang sagot, iraraffle po natin at kung sino man ang mapili, tatlo ang mapipili ay magiging scholar dun sa aming mga courses. We have so many courses right now, makakapili kayo doon kung ano mang gusto nyong salihan. And... These are the two courses that we we uh, we are promoting now. Yung HR Essentials Masterclass. This is for uh, designed for the newbies in HR. Para dun sa mga experience, gusto magrehash at refresh ng kanilang knowledge. Para rin sa mga senior HR, gusto ng i-treat yung kanilang mga staff para same page sila. Ay uh, pwede nyo po itong gamitin magandang uh, free training para sa inyong mga tao. Um, um mababa lang po ang uh, ang uh, aming aming tuition fee ang regular price na 28 but we are offering at 1 to 50. Ang performance management appraisal system naman very timely sabi nga ni Sir Darwin kanina dahil panahon na para um i-review na naman ang mga performance ng mga tao um we can guide you and teach you and train you on how to do it properly. Ang performance appraisal management, meron pong 12 modules na inyo makikita sa aming website. That's only 1 to 60. At pwede makuha ang libre ito pag nanalo kayo sa scholarship. Kaya makinig maigi sa episode na ito dahil meron, kami mga, meron kaming critical and interesting question. Darin? And Alan, if I'm not mistaken, no, the link for the scholarship application would be posted at the comment section of this yes. episode, right? Yes, mamaya. Darwin, um, we are looking for, for the whole year of 2022, 30 scholars. Kasi last year, nagkaroon kami ng 21 scholars. Eh. Some of them are coming from your HR, from our HR cafe. So this year, I'm, I'm looking at 12 for the entire year coming from here. And others naman will be coming from um similar program. Darwin? Thank you. Thank you, Mentor Alan, for this. And again, to all our viewers right now, if you want to avail of the HR Essential Masterclass or the Performance Management Appraisal System, just reach out to Mentors Alan. And if you would like to try your luck and be a scholar of Creative Moves Virtual Academy, please check the comment section and the announcement 
within the program for today. Okay? Now, also from my end, I would like to announce that um, on February 16 to 18 to the, of this year, to 2022, magkakaroon po ng Talent Con. And Talent Con for this year is entitled Rebuilding Organizations with the Power of People. So with this Talent Con, it's uh, powered by PM Consulting. Our good friend Engel, Engelbert Kamasura is heading that particular company. And um, this will be co-presented by PMAP or People Management Association of the Philippines. And of course, our group, the Philippines HR Group. So watch us out there. And um, uh, this is a free, I know uh, this is a free training program, a free forum that will happen February 16 to 18. And the details of it, kung gusto nyo pong maka-attend uh, ng forum na ito, ng seminar na ito for free, I have posted it at the Philippines HR Group uh, FB page. Andun po yung link. And just register and you will be given a uh, free pass for this talent call. I'll be one of the speakers uh, representing the Philippines HR Group at the 2022 talent call. Okay? And also, if you have any questions, please make sure to post it at the main page of the Philippines HR Group. We also have FB group page in LinkedIn and also, of course, in Facebook. Uh, and if you would like to review all of the past episodes of our free training programs and online talk show, uh, please uh, add us up uh, at the HR Cafe. Usapang trabaho po iba pa. Elect you po ang FB page namin. We have a growing community there. Almost 5,000 na. Sa Philippines HR Group, in LinkedIn, we're also almost 5,000. Pero of course, sa Facebook, we're now more than 265,000 members and growing. And if you would like to be a sponsor of the HR Cafe, sabi ko nga kanina, every episode, hundreds of people ang nag-join sa amin live. And yung mga team replay, umaabot po yan ng more than 10,000 views in just a week. If you would like to uh, be part of our sponsorship roster, please reach out to me at darwinrivers at yahoo.com or please feel free to message any one of our mentors. We have mentors Rona, mentors Tina, mentors Burns, and of course, yours truly. Okay? And of course, for the exciting part of our HR Cafe, Usapang Trabaho, Boy, Iba Pa, episode 78, we have Miss Lisel Flippy who will be discussing and teaching us about how to activate LinkedIn's eight touch points to power up your job hunt. Para po ito sa mga tao na maghahalat ng trabaho, nag explore or nag ng mga itong trabaho in the future, paano nyo nga ba ma-utilize ang maigi ang LinkedIn or ang social media for that matter para mapansin po kayo ng mga prospective employers niyo. So we have mentor Stina who will properly introduce our guest speaker for today. Mentor Stina. All right, we have for our main event, we have Miss Lisel Delantar Flippy. She is a LinkedIn for business strategy and the co-founder and CEO of Opti slash Right. To date, they have helped nearly a thousand executives and entrepreneurs position themselves for career change and thought leadership. Opti Right offers customized workshops and do-it-for-you packages to help professionals build online credibility and pursue authentic networking to remain and become top of mind in their fields. We are very she's gonna talk today about active Activate LinkedIn's eight touch points to power up your job hunt. LinkedIn has now become a very good source of employment and employees. So we welcome Ms. Lisel to share us with us her knowledge on how to activate the eight touch points in LinkedIn para at least maka, uh, maka sa mga taong gusto mag-recruit or gusto magparecruit, makinig po tayo sa kanya. So Lisel, we turn over the slot to you. We will just be in the background. Thank you so much, Mentor Tina, Coach Darwin, and Mentor Alan. I'm so excited for uh, this afternoon. Um, let me just share my screen. You know? uh, I'm so excited All for right. this afternoon. And um, I would be... Uh, this is my first time on HR Cafe. 
and I hope it's not the last. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, it's loading. Let me know if um, it is already on screen. There, can you see my screen? Is it visible? Hello? Okay, great. I see it now on my um uh, on, on FB Live. Okay, so um good afternoon everyone. Um whenever I am asked to give a talk, um I bring with me four types of perspectives. Okay, una as a trainer and educator. So I simplify what's complex and as much as possible I will tell you the context behind behind it so you understand the thinking process behind the solution. Second, as a content marketer, so we help B2B businesses. So I, I will be speaking from uh, a content marketer's perspective and how to execute a strategy to keep top of mind among a C-level decision maker. So pag tayo po ay naghahanap na trabaho, hindi lang naman natin gusto ma-attract ang mga recruiters and HR managers. So we also want to Earn the eyes of CEOs, CHROs, etc. Right? Third, as a service provider. So whatever it is that we are going to teach, or I am going to teach rather, we practice it ourselves. Okay. We utilize LinkedIn to connect, nurture leads, and grow our business. And last but not the least, I'll be speaking as a resume writer for C-level executives around the world. So we bring science and art. On, optimize re on optimizing resumes and LinkedIn profiles to stand out among other qualified candidates. Okay, so um, we're talking about how do you stand out when there is a sea of other qualified candidates. In order to do this, I would like to impart two types of lessons. First lesson is how do we job hunt with the eye of a marketer? And second, the banggit to ni mentor Alan kanina, how to job hunt with the grit of an entrepreneur. All right, so uh, without further ado, let me proceed. So una muna, what is LinkedIn? Okay, so let's answer the big question in the room. Malamang dahil HR tayo, maraming, marami na sa inyo na naintindihan or nagamit na ako ano ang LinkedIn. Okay, so if you know what LinkedIn is for, um, probably you can say that this is for job hunting, this is for recruiting, right? Um, this is for you to um, have another platform aside from Facebook or Instagram um, uh, to, to have like a professional platform. Now, if you have an actual LinkedIn account and you have added new connections, tapos nag-write ka na rin ng post on LinkedIn, can you type number two on, the, um, on your um, com comment section? So I'd like to see that uh, I'd like to see you type number two if you have a LinkedIn account, you already added new connections, and you started a post on LinkedIn. So I hope I can see um, many number twos on the content section, on the comment section rather. All right. So just keep the just keep your responses coming. All right, number two, sabi ni Anne Singid, Maureen Garcia, Mirna Desena. There, thank you so much for your response. No, Maganda kasing makita kung ilan ba talaga din sa atin yung active um, on the platform. Now, no matter what you know about LinkedIn, whether basic ito or advanced level, let me share how the platform has evolved. Thank you so much, Jules, Bong, and Cha, for your response. So, paano nga ba nag-evolve na ang LinkedIn? First, it has been a professional network, right? Professional network. When LinkedIn was launched in 2003, we know this as a place where job seekers post CVs, recruiters post jobs. But then, it has grown to 810 million global users. And dun sa 810 million global users, 8.6 million ay galing sa Pilipinas. Okay? Um... In 2020, when I delivered a similar talk like this, there were just 7 million profiles. So just imagine in a span of two years, the magdag ng 
Uh, well, 1.6 million agad ang nandun. Why? Because the pandemic also allowed more people to be online, right? And to take um, job hunting um, as their own personal accountability. So, um, yung vibe sa loob na LinkedIn, um, it's like a massive workplace where millions of potential employers, big bosses, clients, independent contractors, and fellow job seekers are watching. So being on LinkedIn means opening yourself to a big professional audience and people are in the platform because they have an agenda. Okay? Hindi naman tayo nag-join lang sa isang social media network, particularly LinkedIn, just because we want to have a um, to have an account there. Okay? So when you're on LinkedIn, most likely you have an agenda. Okay? So what are these? Job hunting, recruitment, you want to share your professional ideas, thought leadership, and of course, those who wants to sell. Okay, so pwede magpabida sa LinkedIn, but you just have to do it wisely. All right. So, sa LinkedIn, what do you think is the main product? So, let's say it's a professional platform with a social marketplace, right? Um, LinkedIn kasi hindi lang siya professional marketplace, but it also, uh, sorry, it hindi lang siya professional network, but it also um, evolved to be a social marketplace. What does this mean? This means um, LinkedIn is a platform where people can directly interact with one another. Okay, so there's no gatekeepers. Okay, so regardless of your agenda or purpose in a social marketplace, there is usually one product that is highlighted. So the main product is three-letter word. Do you know what it is? Type it on the comment section. Ano kaya ang main product ng LinkedIn? Three-letter word. Pag marketplace siya. Any guesses? Okay, so yeah, job. Okay, sabi ni Tessa, job. Sabi ni Lori, you. You are the product on LinkedIn. Okay, why? What's the proof na you are the product on LinkedIn? First, marketers use LinkedIn to educate and influence. Okay, second, people will upgrade their LinkedIn membership. They pay additional to be LinkedIn Premium, to connect to people outside of their network. Okay? Ikaw yung product kasi gusto nila na makakonect sa'yo. Okay? Um, recruiters use LinkedIn to connect even to passive candidates. Okay? So, LinkedIn, if you are the product, LinkedIn will not work unless you treat it, I mean, if you treat LinkedIn as an online billboard, okay, then it will not work that well. Okay. So even if you post job opportunities on your uh, personal feed, yes, you can attract people who will like it or who will apply, but it will not get a high engagement But it's uh, by itself. So if the main product is you, you will have to drive the conversation. Whatever it is that you post, it cannot sell or attract without you. Okay. So if it's a social marketplace and you are the product, what factor will drive success on LinkedIn? Okay, so it's a social marketplace. Pero may currency sa LinkedIn. Ibig sabihin, hindi naman tayo nag exchange ng pera sa LinkedIn immediately, di ba? So, ano kaya itong, uh, itong thing, beginning with letter T, that drives people or that connects people, that builds relationship? Five-letter word, starting with letter T. Okay. Sabi ni Don Don, talent. Meron pa bang iba? Yes, tama ka Ace Gismundo. Trust. It is trust. Trust is currency in LinkedIn. Malaking bagay ang trust sa LinkedIn because it is a professional network. And we are meeting potential employers. No, There are many, um, I mean, you are opening yourself to a very big global network. And so it's impossible that you know everyone, right? So trust is big on LinkedIn, especially if you're meeting potential employers for the first time. So in the case of recruiters, alam natin na trust is a big rep uh, responsibility because you represent your company. And if you are a job seeker, trust is what we want them to feel. 
when potential employers look at our profiles, right? So sabi nga kanina eh, um, uh, when we have our profiles done we, and when we have our resumes done, it will be like, um, parang it's, it's, it's the entry point. No, so therefore it should emanate trust, right? So LinkedIn is all about building a relationship. You gain points whenever you build trust. So that is the very reason why we will, we will be discussing touch points because we want to establish trust and we know that this is built over time. However, there is one thing that we consider, you no, know, and this is what we call as time. Okay, as job seekers. We, there is one aspect that we consider, and bucket time, because we have to be strategic, because definitely you have, we you have um, other responsibilities. You fulfill different roles aside from job hunting, diba? Some of us are job hunting on stealth mode, patago, kasi gusto lang muna mag-explore kung anong meron sa labas. Some of us have responsibilities at home. Um, meron tayo mga full-time jobs, etc. So, how do we do it strategically para hindi din naman sobrang wasting ng ating time? Okay, so let's look at the numbers first. Okay, um, when you do a search of HR managers on LinkedIn, there are 3.1 million. So, these are global profiles, okay? And 31,000 of them are from the Philippines. So, yesterday, I looked at um, yung mga HR manager job posts uh, for General Motors. So, this is a job post in the Philippines. And, wow, there were 200 applicants. Right. Tapos, tiningnan ko, okay, um, what about uh, gusto ko mag-apply pero remote, remote HR jobs? Um, lumabas sa LinkedIn, 422 search results of remote HR job positions. Okay, so anong ibig sabihin nito mga numbers? 3.1 million ang mga uh, profiles na, ng HR managers on LinkedIn. Th um, 31,000 doon galing sa Pilipinas. Isang job post ng GM Motors, naging 200 applicants na kaagad. Tapos, 422 results ng remote HR job positions. Okay. So, nabanggit to kanina about the great reshuffle and the great resignation. What does that mean? That means that there are many people who decide to, uh, that they would like to um, explore opportunities kasi they think that this that this is a ripe time for them or at least um, they have to take this on while um, while their own circumstance are changing. May mga iba na, oh, ang sarap pala ng work from home. So, maghahanap ako ng trabaho na work from home. Or, ay, gusto ko pala talaga sa retail. Maghahanap ako ng trabaho sa retail kahit na nasa um, engineering company ako. So, with the great resignation and great reshuffle, there are there is high demand for HR positions. Okay? Pero alam din natin na nag evolve Yung recruitment, yung hiring, yung retention, L&D benefits, etc. nag evolve siya, lalo na people are either going back to the office or hybrid mode, etc. So, mas alam nyo yan. Um, now, the question is, how can you prove that you are the right HR who can take the company um, to success amidst all the changes? Okay, so, um, if things are changing, there is high demand. Um, there is also uh, a solution for us to also think differently about how we job hunt. So we do search, we do attract the right people towards us, we nurture them, and then we build trust, pero we find out muna where they hang out. Okay, so we search, attract, nurture to build trust. Okay, And we know that they hang out on LinkedIn. So, bakit ka ba kailangan nito? Alright, so let's say you are confident. Sobrang confident ka na you are the right candidate for that particular position. Pero, pag nandito kayo at nakikinig, malamang kasi may na-experience na kayong frustration. Okay, bakit may challenge? Where is the challenge coming from? So, there is a challenge in opening doors on LinkedIn. So let's say you have worked in a different position before and then you wanted to try a different industry. You know, do you stand a chance? Will you stand a chance? But what if during the pandemic you had to pause in your current work because life happened? How can you get back on track? So, you know, we're confident that we are the right candidate, but there are some things that frustrates us. So 
how can we use branding? How can we use um, LinkedIn for this instance to get us back on track and to make a search attract, nurture um, the right type of people um, for our uh, for our career? You know, um, I mentioned a while ago that you are the product, correct? So kahit na dami natin frustration, we have to think that we are the product and we don't start from zero. Kahit na nag-pause ka sa iyong um, sa iyong um, uh, current job, you don't start from zero. We you start from experience. So when, when we talk about experience, it's the total accumulative uh, experience, both personal and professional. So if there's anything that the pandemic taught us, entrepreneurs, it is this. Okay. So and and we share our perspective to you. Um, as long as you provide a solution for a real problem then you will find the job. So as long as you find a solution for a real problem, then you will find a job. The pandemic taught us that you are worth more than what you offer. Sometimes we think, di ko to kaya eh, wala pa akong experience dito sa bandang, uh, sa, sa ganitong function eh. No? Um, but if you look at your total accumulative experience, if you look at the solutions that you provide, if you look at... Um, things that you were able to achieve for the company, eventually you will realize na, oh shocks, I am worth more than just this particular position or just this particular function. Okay? So, if you're experiencing some frustration, um, you probably are here, hearing um, hearing me talk, or baka naman kailangan mo lang i-validate that you are going in the right direction. So where are the usual points of frustration? First is unresponsive contacts. Okay, so unresponsive contacts, di ba, you wanted to establish, um, uh, you want to grow your network, pero hindi naman sila sumasagot sa'yo. Second, um, you can't determine who is active and who are real accounts. So um, you don't know whether this particular person na nasa LinkedIn na gusto mong mag-connect kasi uh, Hopefully, you can be part of their company. Pero there, you don't know what, um, ano ba siya, active ba siya, um, real account ba siya, yun. And third is, um, we want to attract um, ourselves to the right companies instead of, I mean, we want to attract the right companies towards us instead of always constantly pushing our agendas. Paano natin gagawin yun? Diba? If they're unresponsive, if... Um, we can determine kung active ba sila or totoong tao ba sila. Or third is, nakakapagod naman if we are always selling ourselves, di ba? So how do we um, attract the right companies towards us? So, um, balikan natin yung inexplain ko kanina na we are the product and we have to drive the conversation. So, 40% of job openings, alam natin, I advertised in classified ads, online job boards. But there is what we call as the hidden job market. And 70% of employers um, are looking for talent within their company and their immediate networks. Okay, so this is true. Um, uh, sharing from the perspective of an entrepreneur, there are jobs or tasks that are not yet open for now. Okay, maybe hindi pa siya priority. Pero alam nyo, if they find the right candidate, it will be. If you provide that particular solution that they need and they know that you can do that, diba, um, it will be open to you. Okay. So, with that, the key is to activate your LinkedIn like a human being. Diba? It's funny because from experience, um, getting to convert something you are good at face-to-face -face into digital prospecting is easier said than done. Diba? Parang, Eh, paano pag magaling ka din talagang makapagsalita, pero face-to-face, tapos -face, gagawin mong digital, ha haharap ka sa isang computer, and you try to mimic how to be, uh, to show yourself or to show up. Di ba? Parang medyo, medyo nakakatawa, pero totoong nangyayari na um, it's kinda harder. So in our experience, it is still mind-blowing getting to coach an entrepreneur or CEO on how to prospect leads online. Kasi it's not, it's not that natural for for, for people um, to do prospecting online. In this particular case, it's career prospecting, di ba? So, pag CEOs or entrepreneurs, medyo hirap na, pero kailangan nila to for their business, paano pa kaya ang mga job seekers, di ba? Kasi career prospecting takes um, some, some proactiveness, takes some ninja moves, di ba? Kasi 
in order for you to get the jobs that you want. So our topic for today is knowing that there are many touch points on LinkedIn. Now, one thing that I would like to debunk is akala natin isa lang ang way to connect. Okay, akala natin there's just one way to connect. And paano ba mag-connect? Direct messaging. Right? But we would like to debunk that na doon lang yung way to connect. In fact, on the eight touch points that I'm going to share, walang direct message doon. <laughs> okay? All right. So, let me share ano ba yung eight touch points. Pero bakit nga ba eight? Bakit hindi seven, six, nine? Diba? Um, well, the eight touch points that I will share aims to make an impression, provide value, interact, build recall, and encourage conversation. So, um, I want to equip you with the mind of a marketer and the grit of an entrepreneur when prospecting for jobs. Kasi kami, mga digital marketers, we already made waves on prospecting online. And um, as an entrepreneur, uh, with an eye of a marketer, alam mo na you are the product. Okay? If, we're, if we're clear that we are the product, um, then um, th that mindset will breeze us through this lesson. Okay? Bakit nga ba it? Because in prospecting, it sometimes takes seven to eight touch points to generate a response. Diba? Um, if we're selling something, uh, hindi naman automatic na isang beses mo lang, isang beses mo lang natin makita, bibili na natin. Sige, let's say um, you have something in Shopee or Lazada, right? It's not like you just see it once and then you buy it. Well, it, well, depende na lang if you were already looking for that particular product for a long time. But it takes seven to eight touch points usually. Okay? But... Buti na lang, alam natin now that it's not just through direct messaging that we can make collect to the other person. Diba? So, ano nga ba tong eight touch points na to aside from direct messaging? Here it is. Okay? Ay? Okay. I'm listing down all eight touch points that we will discuss in this session. So, I've chosen carefully because these channels uh, was able to help me win qualified connections, open lines of conversation, and build trust, which led to discovery calls, referral systems, new partnerships, and paid projects. So, ito yung share ko sa inyo. Follow, join industry interest groups, register to events, say thanks and congratulations, join your university's LinkedIn page, participate in polls, writing a post, and making a smart comment. So, let me go through this one by one. Follow. Okay. Um, the first touch point is to follow. Following someone on LinkedIn is a less intrusive way of connecting. Okay. So connecting kasi on LinkedIn, it would require the other person to say yes or no to connect with when you when you send them an invite. Right? So paano mo gagawin yung follow not as a touch point? Okay. So first, um, it's non-intrusive. Meaning if someone follows you, um, the other person cannot really say no, right? Um, and then, the content of the person that you follow will show up on your news feed. And you can engage on their posts. You can also follow anyone without waiting for them, like what I mentioned, to accept your follow request. So, who do you follow ba? You follow big shot CEOs or global influencers um, that, uh, that of the companies that you want to apply for on LinkedIn. Okay. Following is also another approach for those who already have more than 30,000 connections. What if, uh, ano ka, matagal ka na sa LinkedIn, 30,000 in connections mo, you know, you cannot add anymore. Um, so you can follow people. Um, what are some of, uh, what are some of the ways that we can be guided, you know, with, uh, with this as a touch point? So how do you maximize it? First is to look at your prospects interest section. Okay, so if we are if we want to apply for a particular um, companies, so tingnan natin yung CEOs nila, etc., then um, let's look at his interest section. Right? So malamang merong other companies dyan. Um, he's also following um, some news uh, uh, news outlets, probably also on other influencers, etc. So choose among the individuals and companies that they follow. Okay, so pag nakita mo yung interest section nila, then if it you know, if it resonates with you, then follow them too. So let's say you want to get into marketing director roles. Um, so try to follow a uh, company's marketing director. Tapos, tingnan mo yung mga gurus, sino yung marketing gurus that they follow, or media that they follow. So let me give you an example. 
Um, I am following um, Forbes magazine. So, hindi lang naman to tao. So, it could also be um, companies or uh, maybe news outlets that um, they follow okay, or are relevant to your industry. So, here's my example. So, I am following Forbes magazine kasi the CEOs whom I want to prospect are following or are subscribed to their content. Okay, so when I comment on the posts of Forbes magazine, usually meron silang ano, yung mga quotes or um, some um, long-form articles, etc. So when I comment on that, nakikita din ako ng mga CEOs that I want to um, prospect. Right? So that's how you can maximize follow as a touch point. Second touch point is to join industry or interest LinkedIn groups. Okay, so imagine if you are part of a group and then you are joined because of a common interest, geography, for instance. No, malay natin gusto mo pala na uh, to work in Singapore eventually. So you can be part of um, the Southeast Asian group, etc. So profession. So um, aside from HR, you might have other uh, fields of specialization, um, company, industry, or aspiration. So on LinkedIn, you can very much search for different groups. So having an optimized profile, of course, yun talaga yung basis kasi um, LinkedIn groups would have moderators and they can either decline or allow you access. So how do you maximize joining groups as a touch point? All right. So um, you search for groups relevant to your, well, um, this is what we call as target offer authority and keywords, but on the view of a job seeker, um, look at it as uh, you, you search for groups based on the industry that you want to target, um, your field of specialization, etc. Okay? Or even geography. Pag gusto nyo palang lumipat um, to other countries, uh, then you can also search for groups there. All right. So um, for me, uh, since ang target ko ay C-level audience, um, I was I'm I'm finding groups where they are like startups, you know, um, B two B, uh, B two B uh, businesses. So if I'm part of a group, it creates a feeling of association because we share a similar interest. Therefore, uh, pag nandun ka sa group and they are also part of that group, there is a higher chance that they will accept your connection request, right? Because nag invite tayo eh, eh pag part ka din na group nila. Parang ano, parang it, it gives some sort of um, a warm feeling na, oy parehas pala tayo, we're like-minded, you know. Um, and at the same time, if you share your posts in that group, it gives you another way for the members to know you. Okay, so maybe here I would also like to remind you that um, if you uh, feel a bit frustrated about in terms of engagement, bakit hindi sila nagla-like sa mga posts nyo? Um, here's one reminder. Um, si level audience don't really engage on posts. Okay? Hindi sila yung ma-like, etc. But they will read. Okay? So, um, later on, I will explain how you can make your posts as a touch point. Alright, so how do you search groups on LinkedIn? So just type based on keywords like what I mentioned a while ago. Um, and then yun, you will be able to see the, the different types of groups and you know just be part of that. Okay. Um, next touch point. Um, next touch point is what we call as um, register to events on LinkedIn. Okay, so now more now um yung mga events kasi um let's think about it in two ways. First is yeah, of course we want to um, gain some lessons from speakers, um and then yung virtual events since we can attend, you know there's no um there's no boundaries to what to what kind of events we can search for. Uh, but these are also opportunities to network even reconnect to um to your own connections tapos we can also make new ones diba um i cannot stress enough how um uh red, um attending events uh was able to win me uh qualified connections right kasi meron kaming uh something that we have shared together and this is um joined uh joining a, a linkedin event so um, for those who are worried na baka, naho, baka hindi na masyadong magkaroon ng mga LinkedIn events. So don't worry about that um, because LinkedIn, uh, online events will not win okay? even, after the, um, even, even after the pandemic. Alright, so how do you make 
events, LinkedIn events work for you? First is um, type a keyword related to uh, to what you want to attend to. <laughs> okay, can HR industry or merong kang passion or merong kang um, particular types of companies like startups that you want to you know you want to get into. And then just click on the events tab. So as an attendee, you get to send invitations to your own connections. How about if yung gusto mo palang, uh, you already have someone in your LinkedIn network and um, you know you want to reconnect to them in a non-spammy way, you join an event and then if you think that this is also something that that other person um, you know will be interested in, then that's a way for you to message them. Uh, that, that's a, another reason for you to message them. Um, so you get to send, uh, you get to share these events um, to other to attendees on your network, and then you also get to chat with fellow attendees using the ev uh, event page feed before, during, and after the event. And then yun, you get to connect with fellow attendees and leverage on the shared experience. So on your screen is a conversation with one who I connected after joining a startup grind event. So dahil, um, you know, I just said, so your intro note, hope to connect with you on LinkedIn, right? I did not, I did not even, you know, make, make a pitch. I, I did not make a pitch. I did not um, explain too much, but. Um, it's because my profile is optimized and that's why he was already able to glean it from that. Um, and really, uh, getting to have a wider network there, that's also a very big plus um, when it comes to um, uh, gaining employment also. Diba? Parang um, you get to widen your network based on who are the types of companies, the types of individuals, or the types of people in the geographies that you want to apply for. All right. So fourth touch point is saying thanks and congratulations. Okay. So alam natin to kasi pag may birthday, di ba? We get notified sa LinkedIn. Oh, birthday ni ganito. Or um, someone um, uh, was promoted into a director level. So we say thank you. Um, for those who con whom we connect on LinkedIn. So at the same time, you can also say thanks on the following. We can thank someone for being part of our network. Diba? That's something that we already know. Next is to thank someone for their helpful resource or article. Okay? So if someone um, uh, shared an article, you can thank them for that. You can thank someone for endorsing or recommending you for an insi uh, insightful comment on their post. So there's a, a lot of ways um, or a lot of opportunities for us to um, make a touch point using thank you. Now, how about congratulations? So we say congratulations on their published birthdays and work anniversaries. We say congratulations for those who moved um, companies or updated their position. So you will see this nga, like what I mentioned because you will get notified. So how do I use this as, um, as a touch point? All right. So, um, if you look at the left, okay, so I just thank uh, Jim okay, for being part of my network. And then um, from there, it, it sparked conversation, right? Um, ang ayo kasi natin is, uh, you know, it, it's kind of it's kinda um, hard for us to, uh, or to um, f find some ideas on why we get to connect, but actually using thanks and congratulations, it already drives a lot of, uh, a lot of conversation. All right, so yun, dito naman sa right, you know, I just said um, happy birthday. I just said happy birthday to a, to a network. All right, tapos yun, they already want to, um, they already wanted to hear more of uh, my insights to my lead magnet. Okay, so bibigyan ko kayo na search hack. Okay, so this is a quick search hack to know milestones of your um, target audience. Okay, so... Um, the way to do it is to type some prompts like this, promoted to director. So, for example, you want to connect to those who got recently promoted to senior roles because they will be most uh, they will most likely be your future bosses. Okay, so um, I type promoted to director on LinkedIn. Of course, I can still um, keep this more uh, parang inanaro down ko pa, but just for uh, for 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 giving you an example. Okay, so I, I type that and then go to posts to see who are new connections that you might want to congratulate. 
Okay, so there are still different types of um, search filters here, such as industry, if you want to be more specific. But, you know, just, just doing that, then you can uh, be able to get in touch with the new CEO, director, manager, VP, etc. Let me know if masyadong mabilis or it's, it's fine too, okay? Okay. Next touch point is to join your university's LinkedIn page. So uh, we may we mentioned a while ago that um, having uh, an educational background um, is uh, will, will be help will help us uh, build confidence, right? Um, and um, there are also some jobs that are really looking for those particular um, uh, types of uh, educational background. But we also mentioned na maraming different types of um, education. You no, know, there are certifications. There are also um, some groups which provide uh, diplomas, etc. So on LinkedIn, um, our aim kasi is to have our cold prospects to know, like, and trust us. And the more uh, the more associations that they have with us, the more uh, the more we build trust with them, right? So. Um, I can't stress enough na because I was an alumni, fellow alumni, um, you know, they trusted me also with their business. So, um, yun, join your university list LinkedIn page or if you have some certifications, etc., yung mga associations which gave you some certifications, join them then as long as they're on LinkedIn. All right, so these are examples of, um, of how I use this, uh, joining your school's LinkedIn page as a touch point. Right. And number six is participating in polls. Okay. So um, we see a lot of LinkedIn polls on LinkedIn. Um, and participating in polls uh, adla allows you to expand. And hindi lang sila dun sa mga first connection nyo. Okay. This is a touch point because you can use LinkedIn search bar to find polls and type in a keyword related to your target market or offer. For instance, um, if I want to um, find uh, polls of entrepreneurs, right? Um, so I just type polls plus entrepreneurs, then find posts. Okay, so um, when how how is this a touch point? So this is a touch point because it's easy for us to engage um, with people, um, and then if uh, for instance we we um, uh, we engage on their poll, then they also see that we did engage in their poll and it also uh, will notify on our um, on our feed okay and then i can also get back to him and say hey um that was an interesting poll i i really like to know the result right so it's it sparks another conversation so yes you might not be able to add them immediately um as your connection pero you made uh yeah you made a good you made goodwill by engaging on other people's poll, and it's so easy lang to do. Next touch point, um, writing a post. Okay, so I will teach you, uh, siguro I would just like to say na um, on LinkedIn, one of the things na people are a bit hesitant um, uh, is because they feel like, you know, dapat ano siya, uh, your post on LinkedIn dapat talagang pinag-iisipan. Well, wala namang wala naman ata post na hindi talaga pinag-isipan but look at these examples right so here are three examples um and what i want to um i want to uh, give you or leave you is um a formula so it's called a tie formula okay, so first is target second insight or advice and third is end with a question okay so for the for the leftmost post by Jodiniel Okay, so um, he would like to target the accounting, accounting um, industry in general. So he also shared the experience, niya, nabigay siya na insight, and then he ended with a question or um, yeah, something to engage. Okay, in sa gitna naman, um, Glory Maiduria, what she did was um, she utilized a post of um, an influencer, right? And that's her post. Diba? She she still shared her um her her insight uh, because this is something that she's doing um currently or learning or or, or reading or following. Um and then on the third one is uh Sir Rochelle um Lau uh when she um 
she tagged people because she she got this um, new certification, right? So um, what I'm my point is um, as long as you get to follow uh, some um, some sort of story, di ba? Sino ba yung target mo? What's your insight? And then end with the question. Then feel free to um, to make your posts known uh, uh, or update um, yourself on LinkedIn. Um, what what I also siguro some some tips na rin, no if you just want to always remain with the quotes wag naman okay? um, mag quote ka and then you also provide your insight tie it up to your your industry or the position that you want to apply for and then yun, you can end up with a question why end with a question because um, you also parang it's it's like a prompt for the other person to reply back right okay and then eight, the eighth touch point is making a smart comment. Okay, so um, this is very important. Bakit? Kasi um, commenting on posts of your target gains twice higher connection acceptance rate. Okay, um, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng commenting sa LinkedIn? So usually, we see LinkedIn reaction icons like this. Like, celebrate, support, love, insightful, curious. Okay? Ito yung usual na icons that we see. Right? But if you are there to prospect, particularly career prospecting, I do not recommend that you stick to the usual reactions. Bakit kaya? Bakit hindi tayo mag-stick sa mga usual reactions? Can I ask the crowd? Uh, the audience dito, bakit kaya ang suggestion ko, eh wag lang tayo mag-click ng like, celebrate, support, love, insightful, curious. Any idea why? Yes, meron ba? Sa 26 nating audience. <laughs> Okay, medyo tahimik. Sige, no problem. I will tell you the answer. Okay, the reason why um, I am telling you not just to use all of these um, reaction icons is because if there is a post, 111 yung nag-comment. Yes, correct, Bong to plano. Because I want you guys to stand out from the rest. Um, usually, palagi naman yan eh. Madali lang kasi mag, uh, magbigay ng, um, ng, ng reaction icon, right? Yes, thank you, um, Emmy Manuel. But if you want to stand out and you want to use commenting as a touch point, you want to um, continue the conversation, then then do something extra, right? Do something extra. When you make a smart comment, you stand out among all the rest. Um, here's what I did. Okay, so here's what I did. Um uh, and uh, look at look at what I commented and how it also generated, you know, um, uh, conversation from this particular CEO, right? Yon. So, ano ba yung formula? Simon, Lizelle, ano ba yan? Muturo ka. So, ano formula? I will teach you the smart commenting formula. Okay. So, here's the formula. Um, tag and mention the author. So you have to tag them kasi pag, pag hindi nakatag, sometimes they don't get notified. Uh, I mean, at least if you tag them, um, that means they, their eyes are on it. Second is to uh, compliment or acknowledge. Okay, so smart commenting can also be um, both cheerleading or contrarian view. So you can compliment that you like the post or you acknowledge na, yeah, you're right. Or you can say na, you know, it's different kasi from my experience, etc. Third is to add a value or ask a question. So not all naman, uh, not all posts are something that we can definitely add value. What if it's something so um, different from what we know? Um, and don't worry because you can ask a question, right? And they can they can explain what's the post about. And last is to part with a promise. Okay, so there are some comments uh, na one, two, three lang. Uh, wala namang part with the promise. Part with the promise, let me give you um, an example of what I mean. Okay. So um, I hope you can see my screen so you can read um, the post um, on the left. Okay, so the post on the left, um, uh, let me first 
give you a context. Okay, so I wanted to connect to consultants involved in the SaaS technology and technology niche. So I searched for posts, right, related to SaaS or hashtag technology, hashtag SaaS, kasi ito yung target ko. Alright, so the post is about the author sharing his experience consulting for SaaS companies. So the post, he wanted to correct a misconception that a consultant should know everything. Diba? So the audience, based on the post, the author wanted to feel validated and acknowledged Kasi sinabi niya na, um, hindi naman talaga. I've re- I-, I learned that um, success in one circumstance doesn't always equal to success in another. Okay. So, what I want is to tell him that I agree with his points. So, this is how I commented. I agree with you. I tagged his name. Consulting your customer and those brilliant people around you will help you. Will help uh, provide the right solution. So, glad you shared it. So, you... Um, so you part of the promise is glad you shared it. So it could also be I hope to hear more of these from you, right? Or uh, that that's the that's the um, part with the promise example. So how about if I just want to ask a question? Okay. Um, so I can just simply say I am one with you on this. At, at tag the name. So I wanted to um, ask further or deep dive. Kung ano ba yung advice niya on designing a process to satisfy impatient clients? So as simple as that, um, it uh, it will you know, um, prompt the other person to uh, to continue the conversation and he can also be in your um, first connection. Right? Okay. So here is another example. Um, in, in this example, uh, a resume writer wanted to, Sherry Lynn Venegas, a resume writer, wanted to connect with executives who are looking for employment. Thus, she looked at posts with the hashtag, um, hashtag open to work. Pwede din to na, ano eh, pwede din to strategy ng mga recruiters, yung mga, uh, if you want to see posts um, of people who are open to work, right? So, uh, this particular person, um, the post, the, the author shared his sad experience kasi wala daw siya natatanggap na feedback after being interviewed. So it's basically a rant. Diba? So the author wants to hear ano ba yung experience ng iba and he wants to get advice from others. So for Sherry Lynch, she wanted to empathize with the author but also to express a different opinion. Okay, so this is how she um, she reacted. So I don't think you're overreacting. Indeed, it is common courtesy for a recruiter to update you on the status of your application, whether or not you get accepted. What I disagree with is the generalization that the company has poor culture just because of this one employee. Maybe she just needs to be trained or informed a bit more on good recruiting practices. Your thoughts? Right? So you um, part with the promise niya is, uh, well, she parted with a question. She ended with a question so that the other person will continue on from there. Right? So can also be as short as this. I hear your frustration. I wonder how one could reply if the response was sent by the HR via email. So that's also another um, another example. So um, I hope now with with the examples that I showed you, you know, um, we'll gain more, uh, I guess, um, uh, confidence and also um, just to just to just to proceed and wag na tayo magreaction button. Um, we show up our insights also, and let's not be afraid because it can be adding value or a question. One thing lang siguro um, that that is a no-no on LinkedIn is mas mahaba pa yung comment kesa dun sa post. Okay, so let's not do that. <laughs> Sometimes kasi parang, you know, you really want to make something valuable. You, you really want to share your, um, your your insight because this is such an important topic for you. Then I suggest write a post instead of commenting ng mahaba. Okay? <laughs> kasi syempre post niya yun eh. Okay, alright. So, um, I know it can be tricky, you know, at first to put some effort on crafting your comments, but I know that it will be easier once you start. So the key here is to focus on the posts of your particular market and make this part of your habit. So to inspire you, I'd like to share some inbound messages I received from prospects who complimented me on my um, comment to their posts. So 
di ba, yung goal naman natin is to use touch points to start conversation or to encourage conversation. Because like uh, like what we said, no, this is um, the techniques that I'm going to, sh- that, that I was sharing with you is uh, something that goes beyond just submitting the resume or just um, um, optimizing your profile. Okay? We have to activate with purpose. And when you follow the eight touch points that I shared with you, here are some of the conversations you know, that led me to yeah, uh, business growth also and also network growth. right? So yeah, just persist in taking and sharing. Um, uh, sorry, just persist in taking action so you can reap the benefits. Right. So um, this is a uh, uh, cigar last four slides. You know? So um, what I, I taught you is that serendipity um, is uh, it's a different way of serendipity because here we have to make luck happen. You know, so to succeed in career prospecting, we do not leave things to chance. We have to act strategically so our prospective employers know, like, and trust us that they get excited about the opportunity to chat and possibly find us worth referring or employing. So it's not naman na agad ka makuhan, trabaho, but you know, these are these are building blocks. These are steps that you can do. Um, in fact, um, we have clients um, who are very much happy with where they're working right now, but because they have a future plan, right? Like um, they want to be part of Meta. They want to be part of uh, um, unicorn startups. So uh, ngayon pa lang, kahit na employed sila and they're very comfortable where they are, they're already looking at um, uh, LinkedIn and all the touch points that I'm mentioning, so that when the time comes, four years, three years, that they already want to, you know, vie for higher positions, they're already there. Hindi yung magsa-start pa lang talaga sila. Okay, but starting now is better than not starting ever, right? So um, through LinkedIn's touch points, however, the reason why we are able to do this so um, confidently is because we are we have optimized our profiles correctly okay so um kami sa OptiRight, we optimize linkedin using a formula that has been applied and tested on hundreds of profiles from people of different backgrounds and countries and their objectives and they got results right at the very heart of this is optimizing your profile to quickly capture your target audience attention and capture it in 6 seconds so yung profile um, that you have on LinkedIn, it should capture what's in you for them. But why focus on this goal? Let's say you are a business um, HR consultant. So you have a combined career experience in helping companies in various multicultural environments. And this gives you the unique ability to help emerging startups go global. Okay, so you have that in mind because of your previous um, companies or maybe they gave you additional uh, they gave you additional projects that uh, goes even beyond your your function okay pero alam mo um, not all profiles would dive, would deep dive into that i don't see that uh, i don't see that much um, deep diving when it comes to profiles so Ako, as an objective observer, I would scan and see that, okay, you know, there are 1.9 million HR business consultants anyway that I can choose from. Okay, so, you know, I can just pick and choose if your profile just looks like any other. Um, and I know then that the LinkedIn audience is impatient. Unless, of course, that's their business, you know, to really sca- uh, screen and um, um, candidates. So if you don't have anything that would make them relate to you, they can exclude you from their options. So uh, this is how we can, um, yeah, we can help stand out from the crowd um, using these kinds of activation on LinkedIn. So yes, I'm I'm open to um, to questions <laughs> actually at this point in time. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Lisel, for your time and explanation. We now open the floor to uh, questions from our audience. Uh, let me just start first. Because you've mentioned that uh, how to stand out 
a lot of the people who are using LinkedIn seems to be parang those from C-level management inter- from international markets, usually from the U.S. Uh, how how useful is LinkedIn parin locally? And number two, uh, syempre, parang, do you think that there is space for somebody who is a non, parang not always speaking in English? Or is LinkedIn a purely uh, English website? So, dapat talaga, people have to learn and be fluent and grammatically correct in English kasi baka nakaka-turn off siya. Uh, your thoughts, Lizelle? Ah, sige. So, yung first question kasi is, how relevant is it for the Philippine market? Yes. Or is there uh, job hunting uh, on the Philippine market? I think, um, well, it's not lang talaga, I think, but many people are looking at remote work right now. Right? The, parang yung mga, the gate is open. There are um, remote work, uh, remote uh, remote work and gig workers um, uh, openings. And if you're looking at the Philippines um, as, uh, uh, I mean, Philippine jobs, you can also expand your your search to other uh, to other countries, right? And um, uh, the the clients that we've helped, they are they are saying that they are able to get these jobs because their ability to attract a network, you know, particularly in any social media or LinkedIn. Okay, that's that's one of their parang ano that that gave them an edge um, to get the job that they want. So um, if we just if we if we look at LinkedIn as a long term um, investment on your part, investing time, right, investing energy, etc. Because at the very least, we have to um, have that parang opportunity, regardless if we want to stay in the Philippines or in other countries. So I think let's not limit ourselves just just because of that. Yung second na question is, um, uh, paano ba dapat um, your English? Well, yes. <laughs> I don't want, ayaw ka ng paligo-ligo. Yes, you have to speak in English. But you know what? Um, may mga posts din kasi that if you give some context, uh, you, can, you can speak in, you can share something in Tagalog and then you can explain in English, then they can also understand that. I, I think I had, I, I read, um, and I made even some posts that shared yung how we celebrated Christmas in the Philippines. I even um, explained some of it in Tagalog, and then I just gave an, an explanation also in English. So, yeah. All right. I'd like to share that Coach Darwin is the top is the top 100 Filipinos in from 2019 to 2021. He is also the top 500 global HR leader 2020. Uh, so basically, ang question, diba? Practical tayo, Coach Darwin. Um, How has LinkedIn helped you? Kasi diba parang wala na, nandyan ka na eh. I think he's like top 10 pa nga eh, diba? Coach D, share with us your exper- LinkedIn experience. <clears throat> well, my, my LinkedIn experience is similar to my journey in Facebook. Basically, in LinkedIn, kasi, if you would see, there are there's a different culture and demographics in Facebook and the LinkedIn audiences. In the LinkedIn audiences, they're more serious. Uh, mas, mm-hmm. ano, mas, um, and they're, they're really there to really network and also learn from seasonal and thought experts. With my journey in LinkedIn, I realized that as a Filipino, as an HR professional, we are part of a global network of people who have, who have the same passion and uh, who are in the same endeavor of advancing HR and it made it it gave me an opportunity to have a platform where I am able to connect with these people and because of LinkedIn I was able to uh, connect with leaders not only in Southeast Asia but also in the US in India and uh, a lot more and when we network with each other we realize that we can do more as a group we can do more in being able to uh, share experiences, share knowledge, and also um, share what are the unique nuances of HR per region, per per country. So I think that's that's the value of it. Eh? You are be, similar to Facebook. 
LinkedIn kasi is a social community. And for you to be able to be successful in a social community, you have to be highly visible. Right, Lisel? And for you to be highly visible, ay, hindi lang importante na highly visible ka. Kailangan, your visibility brings value to the audience that uh, are seeing your post. So that's that's where I'm coming from. Again, tama yun. Uh, thank you so much, Dar- uh, Coach Darwin. I'd also like to add, no, um, there are people kasi within our age uh, na they are looking at what's next for them after uh, after um, being an employee, right? They want to get into consulting jobs, right? So when is the time that they're going to start prospecting for all of these clients? Will they start now while they still have the clout? or they still have the network, they can still build on it, or after na, na pag naka-retire na sila. Right? So that's also something, in addition to what Coach Darwin mentioned. Lisel, since we're in the topic of ano, ah, on uh, freelance consulting, HR consulting, um, Mentor Alan has all, has been an HR, a freelance HR consultant for the longest time. Alan, have you ever used social media or have you used social media to really forward your, you know, your advocacy and also your business? Yes. Heavy user ako ng social media. Prior to social media kasi, di ba, talagang email-email lang tayo eh. But the advent of uh, this technology, um, I rely about siguro mga... 75% of my clients coming from social media. Ang LinkedIn account ko, I'm sorry, medyo hindi active. Kaya nga curious ako eh. Is there a, an opportunity for um, freelance trainers like me who has a small training outfit out there na kung saan we can also tap international market aside from from local market? Ma'am Lisel. Definitely. Definitely, you you can. Um, you just have to optimize your profile, para it's easier to see also. So you can just you can make your profile plus your company page, um, and then uh, pinaka uh, mas masasuggest ko talaga yan is uh, since LinkedIn will allow us one hundred uh, to send one hundred connections per um, uh, one hundred connections per week. Yeah, uh, may limit na kasi before, you know, we can we can um, send connections to 500 per week. Do you remember that, Coach Dar? Yes. Um, Pero ngayon, yeah. ano, no, no, uh, no, 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 30,000 na lang. Beyond 30,000, yes. people really have to follow you, eh, no? Yes, correct. Kahit correct. naka-premium ka ba, Lisel, will there be any oh, extension? Oh. Um, that, that one kasi, that's the reason why I also came up with um, the touch points. Primarily because of that limitation. Because regardless of your, um, if you are a uh, parang premium subscription, we cannot 100% say na you can go beyond the 100. So meron per, LinkedIn algorithm still, ha, you know, they don't really reveal it. So I suggest um, to, to make your, uh, to optimize your profile, uh, make your company page, and then start lang with those touch points. You know, join an uh, join a uh, an event. Na may mga speed networking. Just type speed networking on the search bar. Look for events. Um, yun. Uh, ver ano siya? We we got also clients because of those. Good. Sige, I'll explore that. Thank you. I think I'm... Ay, sige. Go coach. Please. Go coach. Sige. Actually, I just like to add. Um, would you know that uh, I just want to share way way back when I was starting my career in HR, I had a side hustle to be an HR consultant of this startup e-commerce company. It was more than ten years ago, and the reason why they found my profile because they found it through social media, particularly in LinkedIn. And from that engagement, it grew from different engagements, and I've met a lot of clients who became friends, uh, not here in the Philippines, uh, they're based in Australia, they're based in the US, and, and um, surprisingly, uh, even after so many years of, oh, syempre, nagtapos na yung nag-end na yung, ano, yung engagement ko sa kanila, they would refer me, they would uh, reach out to me uh, through their friends or refer me to, to their friends to, ano, to also do some engagement. So basically, networking is very important. Especially if your your goal is to be you know, a freelance consultant or you like to have you would want to have a side hustle as a consultant, right? 
Mm. Sa akin, I think there's still an untapped market for foreigners wanting to do business in the Philippines. Because there's a lot of people internationally who wants to open up a house here. The problem is they don't know how to register the tax implications and especially handling labor. Uh, the labor here, like what are the labor laws, what are due process, what security of tenure. So there's still a very big untapped market for LinkedIn uh, catering to foreigners who want to open a uh, business here. And sa akin lang, parang one interesting thing about LinkedIn is when I was an MBA, every single one of us were required to, to actually register uh, a free LinkedIn account. Like that was part of it. First part was to make a LinkedIn account. Second was to take a professional photo and publish it on <laughs> LinkedIn. And the third is keeping it up there. Because apparently in the international world, it's like job street. Eh? That's what people use if they want to hire you, if they want to do a background check on you, they check your LinkedIn. Here in the Philippines, we use Facebook. Eh? Diba? Before you're gonna hire like an employee, you need check my Facebook niya. Pero abroad, they use LinkedIn talaga. They want to see who your connections are, what your experiences, what your expertise are, what your what your writing capabilities are, and they hire. And in fact, those that are yung may nag-aasakin na dito na you want to refer, we don't email the resumes anymore. What we do is we copy and paste LinkedIn uh, profile. And doon sila nag Hire. This is not for young entry level minimum wage employees. We're talking about managerial or supervisory level. Na medyo mataas taas yung yung sahod. And in fact, fun fact, uh, Food Panda actually uh, contacted me for operations in LinkedIn. Siguro mga ano yun, 2019, even before <laughs> the pandemic. So if you really like look into it, parang napaka random, de At that time, Food Panda was not popular yet, but they were trying to build up their team here. So and these are the type of companies and job opportunities that you can find in LinkedIn, stuff that you don't see online or on the classifieds. Like literally, blow your mind away. Very interesting jobs that are available and talagang higher level hindi siya masyadong you know like 10,000, 20,000 like these are at least 100,000 salaries talaga. So anong tips for example for mga job people who want to find those type of jobs Lizelle? Ah okay very good. Um, Sigur I'll just add on um, to using your LinkedIn URL okay so um, I've attended events kahit dito sa Pilipinas. And then when they uh, exchange information, they don't give out um, uh, business cards anymore, right? If you send out your Facebook kasi, um, depende, but we know naman na yung, yung Facebook profile natin, merong mga very strict yung, uh, what do you call that, security, hindi din nila makita, or sometimes baliktad pa yung mga pangalan. Alam mo yun, yung ganyan. So really, LinkedIn profile. Um, the events that I've attended, um, they just exchange it via LinkedIn. Even the emails, parang, because you don't really see anything um, aside from from um, from your from your LinkedIn, and it gives additional validation, right? So if you if you um, that's the reason why um, HR would look at social media, right? just to validate whether this is really the, the same person. So at least on LinkedIn, you don't need to be um, uh, you know you, you have a, a really separate persona there. Um, and then um, the question, sorry, ano nga ba yung question? <laughs> the question yeah, is, what are tips? Apa, for people who want to find better jobs at LinkedIn. Ah, okay. So I will um, share this with you with the mind of a prospecting uh, firm. Yeah, if you recruiter. want to, to do uh, prospecting recruiter. So start ka muna sa ano ba yung mga positions na gusto mo. Ano ba yung mga industries na gusto mo? And, that's, and just search for them. You know, th there would be something like um, 30 minutes. Just devote that, those times. Just to write down what is it that you want, you know, and, in a short term or long term. And then just search for who are these people ba on LinkedIn? What, what does this mean? Um, if I want to be in a flat organization, I want to be part of a startup 
okay, sige, an- ano bang ibig sabihin ng, ano, ng pagiging HR sa isang startup? Uh, and then, on, on LinkedIn kasi, the search filter is very powerful. Right? If you, you, if you put engineer sa Facebook, kung anong-anong engineer yung makikita nyo, even makeup engineer nandun. <laughs> but if you, if you use um, LinkedIn search filter, because it's so uh, it's so powerful diba you can even um search for uh, uh what do you call that um engineers based in a particular country or job posts or events then you maximize that um that's yun yung ano yun yung sagot ko based on uh someone who wants to prospect coach darwin any tips yeah also just just to add to what the sellers already mentioned um, searching for the hashtag, Giselle, right, is also I know um, one of the things that is being used right now. I remember um, that there are people who talked to me last week and they were looking for HR managers, recruiters, who's being paid. Uh, imagine this. The pay is $15, 15 to $20 per hour to be a freelance recruiter. Tapos sa freelance manager, 20 to 25 dollars per hour. US dollars to mga kapatid. And um, they and imagine that uh, that it's I know, it's paid directly to your account. It just have, and it's I know, it's basically they don't have an office here in Manila. They just want to make sure that they have they have um, yeah they have a presence and be able to cap sure the talents and they're they're i know they're they're work from home so if you're working for if you're searching for a work from home setup then search for work at home diva right? and all of the work of work from home opportunities will be there so yeah there's a lot of opportunities sabi nga i know pag may gusto may paraan pag hinahanap gagawan mo rin ng paraan diba right? it's so, worth a try it's worth a try yeah. and and, and I think I know yung yung sa you said the secret that if you if you open yourself to opportunities, opportunities will always knock at your door. Diba? Mm-hmm. So that's that's where I'm coming from. Giselle, we we mm-hmm. we've um it's already past five o'clock and I know that uh you still have a lot of things that you would like to share. But can you please uh Give us a few of your few of your last words and any any promotions that you would like to to share to our audience. How can they follow you? How can they uh, reach out to you uh, for professional services or professional help? Okay, sure. Um, can I share uh, two slides, lang? Sure. Please. Is that possible? Thank you. So, so I just prepared. Um, here are two slides and. Um, these are some of our uh, uh, customized workshops for uh, HR Cafe, but also um, for those who would like to look at LinkedIn as uh, as their business. I mean, look at LinkedIn to find business, right? Medyo mabaga lang ang loading. So sorry na. for that. Ayan. So All there's right. a so, workshop if, coming in. Yes, so group workshops, uh, 20, uh, 20 persons max. So this is what we call as LinkedIn for your career. So we will um, share with you then. It's like a right shop uh, in order for you to optimize um, link, your LinkedIn profile. So it's an eight-hour um, workshop, and these are uh, these are the topics. You know how to stand out in the sea of qualified applicants, how to build a higher worthy profile. We're also talking about um, how to build a, uh, how to make it easy for recruiters to find you, and how to build credibility as your career grows. Very important, nato, kasi we're looking at um, how to uh, para hindi tayo stuck in in a particular position diba so uh, we're looking at it parang ano siya parang future future ready tayo and second is how um if you want to start your own business or you want to break into a new industry so we're also doing an 8 hour um right shop uh, uh sorry rather workshop on unleashing the power of linkedin for your business so optimizing your profile then um applying the tried and tested prospecting technique so what i shared with you is just the um, parang ano pa lang yan, palabok pa lang. <laughs> uh, we're also going to share with you non-spammy connection techniques plus how to turn LinkedIn metrics to your advantage. There. Um, how do you connect 
uh, with me. So follow me on LinkedIn. So here's my um, LinkedIn um, URL. Uh, and then you can also know more about us via our website, www.opti-right.com. Thank you so much, Lizelle. Yeah. Mentor Alan, can you share with us your, uh, no, your question, the raffle question that you'd like everyone to ask for okay, the free scholarship? The key, the key question for everyone, no? Pakisagot lang to. You can just post your answer in the yung uh, provided na link, yung pong ating uh, uh, Google Doc. The key question is, what is LinkedIn's product? It's a three-letter word. What is LinkedIn's product? Okay, so if you know the answer, um, click, click that uh, uh, link that we provided earlier and write your answer there and also your, your details. And for those who are going to watch the replay, ang tanong, makaka-join pa ba sila? Yes, as long as you're watching this um, anytime, and just send your entry. Hanggat hindi pa na-announce yung winner, may pag -asa pa. And the link is on, already posted on our comment section. Yes. Yes, sir. Pag sumagot sa chat box, sa comment box, ha, sasagot kayo doon sa website na pinost namin. Okay? Oh, It oh, is okay, actually... <laughs> A follow instructions, ha? Huh? So this is the, it's at the docs.google.com slash form slash t slash e. We will post it again. Please answer it through the scholarship raffle link, okay? Sa mga tao marunong magbasa, may cheating na, na kulang pa lang yung ano. So please, ha, huh, pag merong nagsulat dyan ng ibang sagot, ewan ko na hindi kayo nagbabasa. Okay, Alan, um, and, uh, any last words from your end also? Well, um, grateful ako eh, dahil ang, ang ganda ng uh, shinare ni Lizelle at na, nalaman ko na ang dami palang windows of opportunities sa LinkedIn. At dahil doon, nabuksan ng isip ko, I will start exploring it now. And yung pong aking uh, profile, bubuhayin ko na. And ngayon ko lang nalaman na ang dami palang pwedeng uh, ma-attendan doon ng mga events no that are related to my interests. Medyo malawak ang interests ko, hindi lang naman HR and OD. Mahilig din ako sa aesthetics, arts, pastel colors, drawing, etc. And malamang marami doon eh, na uh, mga materials that, and can, people look at whom I can connect with no at uh, makapagpalitan ng kaalaman sa bagay na yan, mga special interests ko. Thank you so much for sharing your your time with us. Alan, how can people connect with you also if they would like to uh, reach, out, reach out to you for your uh, freelance training consultancy? Um, they simply go to my website. Simple lang po. creativemoveswin.weebly.com creativemoveswin.weebly.com or um, i-add ko kayo sa aking Facebook muna <laughs> later on sa LinkedIn. And we can reconnect. And even in the Philippines HR group, I'm one of the moderators. Uh, pwede nyo ako makontak doon. Thank you Okay, so thank you very much, Alan. Okay. Mentor Tina, any uh, announcement or advice or last words coming from your end? Facebook is very is a very crowded space in the Philippines because it's the top app yata used by Filipinos. However, LinkedIn fortunately is not as well used by. It's a very parang it's like the wild frontier for Filipinos, but internationally people use it to find jobs or to find employees. Headhunters use it a lot. Okay, so for Filipinos who want the chance maybe to work in a higher level position or work internationally, LinkedIn is an avenue wherein you can expose yourself. And for it's free. The basic plan is free. Registering for it is similar to setting up your Job Street account, putting in your CV. And then you can add in so many things there na pampabango talaga. It is in preparation for a better job of tomorrow. After you've registered for a free LinkedIn account, you can look at LinkedIn jobs. Do you know that Facebook jobs is already being removed after this month? 
So LinkedIn is another way for you to find your future work. Kasi tatanggalin na talaga Facebook jobs. Totoo yun. So link in LinkedIn, take a look at the different jobs that are available out there. Read the description. Be blown away by the type of jobs available there. And then kung ano, use the description as a guideline. <coughs> Excuse me. On how to prepare yourself for these jobs. So, for example, if you see that, okay, these certifications are required, these type of work experience are required, then start preparing for these jobs. Now, because they will actually tell you their requirements for you to be, ano, to apply for that. And it is as great as having one portal to click on many different type of jobs that are of your interest. My third advice is, be it is within yourself to be competent for and qualified for the jobs that you apply for. I think a lot of job hunters mistake is masyado silang tira ng tira ng darts. They don't actually put in the hard work beforehand before they apply for the jobs. Kaya nagiging news and candidates sila. A lot of people are surprised. Bakit hindi ako tinatawagan ng mga recruiters? Ang question ko dyan is, binasa mo ba yung job description and requirements ng job application na yun? Because nothing turns off a possible recruiter with a person na talagang walang, rec- walang qualification. Obvious na hindi nagbabasa ng job ano ng job ano and then ng ng job description ng what type of work at tapos apply if you want to apply for these jobs prepare for it nandiyan na yung road map mo use 1 year 2 years or even 3 years to prepare yourself lalong lalo na ngayon when the economy is still not yet there Nayon sabi mo, my family is, is is starving right now. We need the money right now. Give me some a, a, a job that has an income of at least a hundred thousand pesos. For me, well, that's you being trying to be. Parang nagsu shortcut ka. Gusto mo ng rewards. Gusto mo ng sahod na mataas. Gusto mo ng magandang position. Pero you didn't do the legwork before you apply for these jobs. And then mag- magagalit ka kung hindi ka tinatawagan ng recruiter. My suggestions is for us to be fair. Ang pinakamaganda sa LinkedIn is para siyang cheat sheet. It's already telling you how to get these jobs. Like, I'm serious. Like, pag nakikita ko yung mga requirements nila, parang ang galing. Sinas- as in, tinuturo talaga nila sa'yo eksakto kung anong kailangan mong gawin. And truth be told, sa akin lang ang binabasa ko siya, madali siyang i-accomplish ng mga tao basta you do the legwork. Kunyari, if you want to do an HR position in a bigger company, nandyan talaga nakasulat ano yung mga skills na kailangan mo para makuha yung mga trabaho na yun. If you're not doing these jobs yet, do it inside your company right now. You tell your boss, boss, pwede ba gumawa ko ng payroll? Because you want to have a job that handles payroll or a HR generalist nakasama ang payroll doon sa job description na gusto mo. Prepare for those jobs now for the jobs that you will apply for tomorrow. I think the biggest complaint of a Filipino worker is lagi tayong nagrereklamo sa mga trabaho natin ngayon, sa sweldo natin ngayon, sa boss saka sa colleagues natin ngayon that we forget that we should be thinking about the jobs of tomorrow, not of today. Okay lang kahit mag-away kayo ng mga colleagues mo at galit ka sa boss mo. Kasi you know what you are doing right now is you are being paid for the training that you're going to get that will be valuable for you to apply for a better job of tomorrow. Gets? Sa ibang bansa, kanyang nagsaschool tayo, di ba nag-aaral tayo, tayo nagbabayad ng tuition. Ngayon, as we are working, binabayaran tayo para matuto. Use LinkedIn to know what exactly the things that you need to learn, the skill sets you need to have. Work on those today. Get a res- Build a resume that anyone will be happy to receive. And then apply for those jobs in LinkedIn tomorrow. 
do the legwork. Wag kasi tayong tamarin. There is nothing that that is rewarding and successful that comes easy for us. Be like Coach Darwin. <laughs> Build in. Sabi natin one hundred top one hundred siya ngayon. Pero one thing is for sure. People who are top 100 built that foundation not today. They're just reaping the benefits today. But they have been working for it decades ago. I, I suggest that everybody does it and follow yung mga taong na nauna para at least maging katulad din nila. Kasi ito lang. Coach Darwin, I know you're very humble, pero pag nawala ng trabaho si Coach Darwin, sigurado ako hindi maraming nakapila dyan na gustong mag-pirate sa kanya. Not because he has a very good LinkedIn uh, profile, which he does, but because he's already put in the legwork even before that to be qualified for the many jobs that are available, not just here in the Philippines, but also overseas. So thank you, Coach Darwin, Sir Alan, and Lizelle for still staying in the Philippines despite being highly qualified for jobs abroad. Coach Darwin, last words? Yeah, thank you very much for that, Tina. And thank you to our special guest, uh, Ms. Lizelle, for sharing your invaluable knowledge and experiences on how to use LinkedIn and uh, for more people to be more active and be able to really get the the most outcome on their social profiles and alan again being i've known you for for the longest time for being part of the philippines hr group thank you for supporting the hr cafe for giving this um scholarship to our viewers and i know a lot of people especially those who are starting would like to avail of those free seminars or scholarship that you're offering now from my end linkedin like any other social media is a gold mine of opportunities and but you won't be able to harvest uh, or or get the the value of linkedin if you don't know sabi nga ni mentor tina if you don't work for today because what you work for today you will reap in the future and i would like to close this particular episode episode 78 of the hr cafe to honor two of my uh co-mentors kasi um, that year, they've already been, you know, they've already been uh, nominated and was also acclaimed as top 100 most influential Filipino women in LinkedIn. And for this year, audiences, supporters of HR Cafe and Philippine HR Group, please, please, please vote for mentor Ronna Florentino and mentor Tina Koan to be part of the 100 most influential Filipino women in LinkedIn for 2021. The link is already posted here at our chat. Uh, and uh, we've also posted it at the HR Cafe and Philippines HR Group. I can stake my reputation. These two ladies have been with me and they've been working hard uh, advocating the, uh, the advancement of HR. Not only in HR, but the advancement of workers uh, here in the Philippines. So please vote for them. So again, my name is Coach Darwin Rivers and you're watching another episode of the HR Cafe Usapang Trabaho Boy Tiba Pa. And please watch out for another exciting and value-adding episode next week, same time Sunday, 3 p.m. for uh, your weekly weekend habit. Bye everyone. Thank you.